We did it. We made it, everybody. We made it back from Oxnard. We made it back from Arizona. Can you please tell me that you can see me and hear me? Because uh, this has been quite a day, quite a hectic day, obviously cut down day in the NFL. And uh, that'll do it to you. Uh, I can see your questions and comments. Matthew M says yes and yes to seeing me and hearing me. I suppose you want me to go with my camera. Oh, yeah. Much, much better. All right. Here we go. Uh, maybe. Uh, I heard my, I have a back spasmy issue. Uh, I'm sad to report. And so uh, I feel like shit. <laughs> but at least I look like shit, too. So it's all a match. <coughs> mm. Okay. Uh, we got the five cutdowns. You're probably f familiar with those. Uh, we reported those immediately as soon as we got word on it. The only thing that we didn't know exactly, um, what was the deal with Ant? And um, that's going to be, we think, that's going to be wave and then injury settlement. Uh, so it doesn't mean he's necessarily done, done. Uh, but he's kind of done. The situation with at least one of the guys who was cut, God almighty, turn it off. Turn it off, people. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I, got, I do have something interesting here. Hold on. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, we'll get to all that. This, uh, is there anything more boring than me looking at my phone? Yes, I think there are. A lot of other YouTube channels. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the Cowboys have made their five moves. The one that jumps out to me is Reggie. Reggie Robinson. Okay. I'm going to give you something exclusive, exclusive that you won't get anywhere else. Okay. He took himself out of the last series in Arizona. He wanted to play. He couldn't run. Um, he had the bad toe and it's turf toe. I'm told. And still in four quarters of play, somebody in the building tells me had five tackles, a forced fumble. Uh, I think a pass defense. <clears throat> Reggie Robinson can play. And yet he might have could have this year gotten cut. So Reggie, who they jacked around position wise a lot. Uh, safety corner, corner, safety, safety corner. Now is a corner. At least now he gets to sit in the building with his toe, get it rehabbed, get it fixed, get it healthy, get in the gym, get in the weight room, get in the film room. Reggie Robinson will come back bigger and better next year. That's a good one. Michael Aldridge says hit the like button. Yes, please. If there's, you know, the video we did like a half hour ago already has uh, 2,000 views. If those 2,000 views would subscribe for free, uh, look what a party we have. Okay, the fullback, Siwoo, is a slightly different situation. Uh, there are people saying, starting fullback, out for the... Yeah, I mean, no, not really. Uh, we'll see if Nick Ralston hangs around. You know, he, if he hangs around till... To get, get a chance to play at Jacksonville, then I'll start believing there's an idea of them keeping uh, a fullback. I don't see a need for it. I don't see a need for keeping a fullback on an NFL team in the year 2021. Uh, the other guys released, of course, as you know by now. I've mentioned three of them. Um, Kyron Brown, the cornerback who just got here from, uh, you know, went to uh, – Went to Oxnard for a minute. Uh, and then receiver Brennan Eagles, the Eagles jersey in the back, Cowboys jersey in the front. It was always kind of weird. I am going to get to Tebow tonight. I am going to get to Jamal tonight. And I'm going to get to your questions. In fact, uh, if you want to pitch something into the brief fund, that is the super chat, you can do that, but you're not obliged to. How do you like that deal? Here's Kelly Mack. 
Howdy Fish. Kelly Mack is an Uncle Fish subscriber. Rowan Donahue, Uncle Fish subscriber. Uh, by the way, you can be a free subscriber. That's grand. If you want to pitch a couple bucks into the pot, you're in a special club. Uh, Rowan Donahue, uh, your book is in the mail, sir. Stars and Strife. Rowan's getting his book. Jared says, hello. Kelly says, I hope life's treating you well. My wife is in uh, is out of town, so I'm here. I'm going to watch Hard Knocks. I'm going to go to bed. How do you like that? Uh, I have two different variations of pills. They told me take one every three hours and then alternate and take this one every, I'm just taking them both. <laughs> Back spasms. Kelly Mack, what about a Jalen trade? You got to have somebody who wants him. Got to have somebody who says, I, I, can, I can see what you guys don't see. I don't see him struggling. I see him looking like a $7 million. And I, it, listen, I talked with somebody today uh, who's close to Jalen Smith, and we we had this conversation. And I I told him, I said, I love, I just think Jalen's a tremendous person. And he goes, why why do why is Cowboy fan nation down on him? I said, you know, the swipe thing probably wasn't great. Um, he brings a lot of attention to himself, and and the thing is, when he talks, you think it's fake. A lot like people think that Jason Garrett's fake. And then me and this guy were talking. We're like, that that really is the way Jalen talks. It really is the way he talks and thinks, just like Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett's been saying, you know, things like, you know, fight to the finish since he was seven years old at the breakfast table with his dad, because that's the way his dad talked. Except his dad would stick an F word in there every once in a while. You didn't hear Jason do that too often. Smash that like button. Hello, Uncle Fish. Kelly Mack thinks the Cowboys are going 10 and 7. Jono Bloke uh, checks in from Australia, Mike. Kelly Mack says that Jalen is a liability in coverage. Then don't put him in coverage. Find something else for him to do. <clears throat> uh, Matthew says Jalen doesn't look like he used to. I, I, I agree. And I can't tell if it's that his body can't just can't do. Is it possible that his body can't do what it could do two years ago? What is he, 24, 25? Wildcat is with us, as always. Redemption Faith TV. What's up, Fish? Plenty. Philip Dunn likes to come in here and remind me to remind you of our slogan. Straight dope. No bullshit. Here's Bill Matrinko. He pitches $9.99 into the Bree Fund. Why? Just because. Jose Lopez says, smoke a joint. I've never done it. I'm thinking about it. Right now, I'm drinking electrolyte Fiji water with uh, a dash of Kool-Aid in it. No, not booze. Fiji water. Get your electrolytes. Go, Cowboys. Fiji water, you haven't paid me a dime. And look what I just did for you. Christopher Michaels, thanks for sticking through. Yeah, um, yesterday, what was I doing yesterday that prevented me from doing fish at six? Uh, Friday, of course, on game day, I was traveling. We got it done, traveling to the game. We got it done later that night. I hope you weren't too disappointed. Uh, and then yesterday we did the deal from Ford Center. So it was a little screwy, but we're here. Yeah, John Bean says, you've been fishing, missing an action fish. What's up? I'm back. Everything's fine. Peter, do you think Dak's injury is a lat tear? That is a good chance of re-injury. I don't. My last worried guy is Michael Irvin. He, Michael Irvin, and I talked to him today. He is sincerely, he just, he thinks they're not telling the whole truth. I told I, I, it's not like you, Michael. Uh, you're a, a positive a beacon of light. I think you're wrong. And I do think he's wrong. I think Dak Prescott has a muscle strain that now no longer bothers him. Uh, and I can say, having watched him throw now, watched him throw every day, watched him throw in Oxnard, run throw in Arizona, watched him throw in Frisco. I just don't think there's a thing there. 
I do understand why if he doesn't play against the Texans, there's going to be more panic in the streets because that was his second original plan. The first original plan, he's going to play at Arizona. So I understand the, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, a little bit of nervousness. I do. Darwin, what's the scoop on Gallimore? Probably six weeks uh, with a nasty elbow. And so he misses the start of the season and maybe Osa jumps up and uh, takes that job. King Noel, that Connor Williams center experiment stinks of Ben McAdoo. <laughs> I, don't, <coughs> I don't think Ben McAdoo had anything to do with that. But uh, thankfully, McCarthy yesterday before the workout, the blue-white family workout at the Ford Center said, Tyler Beatish is our center. We're just trying to get Connor ready just in case. Okay, but quit starting him in a game because – since he can't snap, you know what that does, Coach, don't you? It screws up the other 10 guys. Now, the other 10 guys can't get anything done. $6.15 pitch in, just because Rowan's clever. Excited for the book. Thoughts on the obvious cuts in the next round. I know how things change. I'll just say this. Steven, the other day on 105 Through the Fans, said that I think he used the number 68. I think he said 68 or 65. We had 68 guys that deserve to make this team. It's going to be really hard to cut. I don't see it at all. I think trying to find extra offensive linemen is hard. I think there's good competition at cornerback, although they just might have solved some of that with uh, Reggie. What else is hard? Did you predict, are you saying, Rowan, you predicted seven wide receivers would make it? Yeah, and I that's that's because everybody thought all the rookies, everybody, all the rookies. It's not the way it works. Jack Meeker uh, wants to know about Tristan Hill. McCarthy said he's getting closer, but that's not my impression. So, no, Tr Tristan Hill stepping up to play anytime soon is not my impression. Jono, has short yardage been addressed? Uh, I would say it has in this regard. I got a Hall of Famer who's healthy. I got a Hall of Famer who's healthy. I got a first round talent who's not fat. That's my that's my short yardage solution. Oh, I got a quarterback. David P. What's the deal with swing tackle? If Ball was healthy right now, he's got a bad foot. He might step right in and take it. It's too bad Big Ty didn't didn't have a great camp. He might step in and take it. So it's still wild and wooly. And then, of course, you have Steele and Knight hanging out there. I guess it's going to be Big Ty. Michael Aldridge, are you a Bahana believer yet? Is that what we're calling them now, Bahana believers? Uh, for $9.99. Thank you for pitching that in. No. No. I, I'm worried about their defensive tackles. And have been, of course, all along. Which is why... Um, maybe it's time for me to ask again about Geno Atkins. Kelly Mack pitches in $5. In 89, my brother Don was a decathlete and was scouted up here in Idaho. He got an invite and tried out. Yeah, so Don, <coughs> Kelly's brother Don had a cowboy tryout back in 1989. And you know what that means now, don't you? He's old like me. That's what that means now. Mike Hall says, let's cut steel. Well, let's get through. Coaching staff likes him. Mo, should I be worried that our defense is dominating? Your defense is definitely better than it was last year. That's for sure. Micah Parsons upgrades you. Randy Gregory playing upgrades you. Uh, competition at the other cornerback upgrades you. Diggs is a better player. And then... Finally practicing on Monday night is Malik Hooker. And if Malik Hooker never had an injury, he would have been in a Pro Bowl by now. I mean, so you know, he's a Pro Bowl talent if he had never had an injury. Now, if ifs and nuts were candies and butts, what a wonderful Christmas it'd be. 
William Blackwell, Fish, I still don't believe in the backup quarterbacks. I have to give Garrett Gilbert credit. Um, he he's done. He has certainly done the work. Darwin, Zeke looks younger and quicker. Yeah, and then as far as the short yards thing. And then Zeke will still put his head down and bull over you. You know, it's not like he he turned diminutive. So I, I think you're in really good shape with Ezekiel Elliott. I also think you're in sh- good shape with Ezekiel Elliott on your fantasy team for anybody that cares. Uh, Z Vance, how's the kicker coming along? Greg the leg. Your name is Zemaron and his name is Zerline. Did you guys sit next to each other in class in elementary school? Were you like Jimmy and Jerry, roommates in college? Loopy. Why is everyone sleeping on Donovan Wilson? Uh, he did have a good practice last night. <clears throat> I think I think most people view him as it's a good dimension, but it's one dimensional. That he is a run stopping, get up there in the box safety. It'd be fun if if he's more than that. Zach Craig, tell Jerry, uh, Mr. Jerry, next time you want to talk about willing to do anything to win a championship. Uh, does that include handing the reins to an actual GM? You know, I already said that to him at the Malibu party. Toast me. And his answer was convoluted and fantastic. And by the time he was done explaining it, he, he, he had me totally agreeing, kind of, kind of. He, he basically just said, it's all this, it's all one mountain. It's all Cowboy Mountain. When I'm climbing Cowboy Mountain, and it's marketing, and it's sales, and it's um, media, and it's real estate, and it's football. And that's just the way he thinks. Who you got for game one? Uh, the other team is a six and a half point favorite. Mike Hall, are you glad to be home now? Yes. It is it is fun. I mean, I look forward to it all year. When we go into Oxnard, how are we getting there? Where are we flying? Who we got? Who am I sitting next to? Who am I rooming with? What, what, what kind of car we get? But yes, it, it's good when it's over too. It's kind of like preseason. I can't wait for preseason is what we say in June and July. Then we get to this point and we go, I can't wait for preseason to end Jim Laws is pushing for Chauncey Goldston. Hasn't done anything. Adam Davis, so Dak is okay? Yeah, Dak's okay. John Bean, do you think Dak will play against Houston? Uh, we will monitor tomorrow. Uh, we'll be at the st- uh, inside the star, and uh, we'll, we'll have a look. Does he need to play against Houston? Why did Ryan Fitzpatrick play a couple series for Washington against New England? Why? So we could find out that he's that he that he knows what he's doing as a quarterback. He's 38. Been in the league 17 years. Jonathan, what's the word on Gallimore? Six weeks. Kelly, Canada will make this team. Looks like it. Looks like Canada pushing Jordan Lewis, doesn't it? Uh, for playing time. Fish, I see those gains. <laughs> yeah, right. Fish is the goat, says Ike B. Me. Michael, wife's out of town. You ought to go to the Maverick Bar. You know, I'm a little afraid. Uh, first of all, I really do need to electrolyte up. <clears throat> That's my back spasm problem. <clears throat> I don't know what my coughing problem is. Electrolyte up and don't let yourself get dehydrated with the other stuff, dehydrated with the other stuff. Uh, Cowboys Saturday, Texans in town. I'll be at AT AT&T Stadium, and I will be co-hosting the pre-pre-game show with the great Chris Arnold, two to four from AT&T Stadium. So as you're driving to the game or raking your leaves, 105 through the fan, Saturday afternoon, pre-pre-game, two to four with the fish. Philip Dunn says, hit the like button, people. Hmm. That, hit that thing. It beats the algorithms and tells Cowboy Nation, we don't care what YouTube says. We want in. And then, of course, please do subscribe and tell your friends, too. Greg Atkins, I came in on the video and I saw the headline. 
Tebow and Jamal Cut. I better check that. I don't want to be, but I hate when people go, that's clickbait. I, I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like that. So let me make sure that I didn't do that to you. If I did, I'll change it. Cowboys cut downs. Come on. Reading is fundamental. Cowboys cut downs, comma, Tebow and Jamal Adams. David P., everybody talks about the zebra chair. That is the talk of the town. That's Marsha's chair, the zebra chair. This is Texas. I got, uh, I got cattle. I got gator. And it, I mean, it's alive. This thing, this thing, it bit me on the ass one night when I thought it was sleeping. William Blackwell, Uncle Fish, you're the greatest cowboy reporter ever. And then he shows two, three sets of guns. Boom, I got one. Boom, I got two. My wife's not in town. I can't tell you about three. Jose says, I check out your clips daily. Thanks for the updates. Steve Weber, is D. Lawrence overrated after getting paid? I wish he wouldn't. He gets, he gets he's gotten dinged up all the time, the shoulder. A healthy, a healthy D. Ware, uh, D. Lawrence um, is a premium defensive end. He's a Pro Bowl defensive end. And I don't think, oh, he got paid and therefore. He got paid, then his shoulder and back hurt, and he still kept playing. <clears throat> if it was about, oh, I got paid, now I got my bag, um, now I don't have to work hard, then he, he would have said, I'm not going in the game. I don't have a shoulder. And, he, and he's never done that. Fish, are you going to be on Knox tonight? Hard Knox. I don't know. I, I, I've, I've kissed enough ass. Uncle Fish, do you have a podcast? So my man, IndyCar Tim, takes these broadcasts and he puts them on the podcasty deal. Um, but I don't really know anything about it. So what you're getting here is what you're getting there. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm stupid. Greg Fields. Oh, snap. Fish got the guns out. It's about to get crazy. <laughs> Fish, I love the book. This is Mike Hall. Tons of stuff that I did not know. Here comes Rick Patterson. With a $49.99 toss into the brief fund. Rick Patterson, who I believe has a book on the way. $49. Wooga. Wooga. Thanks, Rick. Uh, I will be watching hard knocks. And as I've said before, you watch if you're if you're at camp or you're in the media or you were even a, a fan or whatever. You watch Hard Knocks for two reasons. Oh, I really want to see what's going on with Zeke and Jack. And then two, you want to see, oh, yeah, there's me and Kavanaugh in the background. Look at us. But I'm just being honest. Fish, we love every chin on your face. F you. It's because of this bad angle. Look. Now where are your chins, you son of a bitch? Huh? Now where are your chins, you bastards? Now where are your chins? Yay holes? But if you, sh this, I tell this guy, I tell people this all the time. You want to make yourself look bad? Okay, then shoot yourself like that. Look how bad everybody looks. You want to make yourself look good? God damn, I'm handsome. <laughs> With... Especially if I would turn the camera down like that and turn off the lights. It'd be incredible. Stanley, fish, I'm coming to the game Saturday. Let's have a brew. Steven is here. Rob is here. Vocals is here. Name me the starting secondary in week one if you were to guess. Hmm, Stephen Weber. Hmm. I guess I need five of them. Malik Hooker needs to start. Can it happen that fast? I vote yes. Donovan Wilson. Where's my starting safeties? 
Jordan Lewis in the slot. I don't, I can't tell you that I've like noticed Jordan Lewis. Diggs and then Anthony Brown versus boss man fat. And you have noticed boss man fat. I think, I think they'd love to have the rookie win that job. So that's the way I'm going to go. El Triste. Hey, Uncle Fish, how is Dak and McCarthy's relationship? This was insightful, <coughs> certainly for the casual fan. Hard Knocks made it look like they don't know each other very well. And I think that's right. And it doesn't mean it's a, a disaster waiting to happen, but they don't know each other. They, they've been on the same team for a year. COVID made it so they didn't get to like live together like they might have otherwise normally. And I'll tell you, it's got a little weird for coach because he's been his whole career, even when he's a head coach, he's the quarterback coach. He's the guy with the relationship. And he didn't have that now. And they need to work on that for the good of, well, mostly for the good of McCarthy, but for the good of the team too. Uh, keep in mind, it's not like he doesn't have other people to work with, both of them. Uh, the, the coach has 84 other guys. And the player has 80 other, 84 other quarterback coaches here in this building. K. Noel wants Nashon over boss man. What? John Bean, when do you think Neville Gallimore? Sir, Neville Gallimore to you, sir. Six weeks. Michael says, Tom Brady, Antonio Brown will tear Joseph to shreds. But if Joseph is better than A.B., friend of the show, then he would tear A.B. to shreds too, right? Roland says, hello, Uncle Fish. Z, you walked into the party. Like I was walking onto a yacht. Are you guys making fun of my ascot? Your hat strategically dipped one below one eye. Your scarf, it was apricot. Okay, this is how dumb Dale Hansen is. And I'm just kidding. I love Dale. So he comes to the Malibu party. And I am, admittedly, I'm wearing uh, a dazzling outfit. It's jeans and a nice dress shirt. Okay. But here's where I got them. I'll show you as best I can. Dale, Dale, Dale Hansen, what have you done? Dale Hansen's retiring, by the way. He's having a party to celebrate himself, and I'll be going to it. Okay, so there's, there's me and Jerry at the party. Hey, that's a good shot. I'm going to use that for the thumbnail. There's me and Jerry at the... So, yeah, go ahead and make fun of my... Uh, Chin neck again. I can't do anything about it. So there's me and Jerry. So take a close look at what's around my neck. So dumbass Hanson goes, what are you wearing, Fisher? I said, well, I'm wearing a white dinner jet. Why are you wearing an ascot? Hanson, you can't retire soon enough, you dumbass. It's a mask. Big liberal Hanson doesn't recognize that that's how you wear a mask by day. And then when you have to interact with Hanson, you put it up here, dumbass. Walked into the party like I was walking into a yacht. My hat strategically dipped below one eye. My scarf, it was apricot. I had one eye in the mirror. <laughs> I had one eye in the mirror. Yeah, I thought that song was about me. Philip Dunn, do you think Boss Man deserves to be the starting cornerback? I don't think he's beaten out Anthony Brown yet. <coughs> uh, Eric Lopez, what are we going to do about the depth at offensive line? I suppose as cuts come down, um, maybe not this week, but as better players get cut, you'll look at offensive tackle. William Blackwell makes a good point. Um. In both, in both ways. We've seen what Lewis can do in regular season, which has been solid. Now what about giving Kennedy a chance? Uh, well, I mean, give him a chance like 
Hey, let's see what you got. Go play against Tom Brady. Mike Hall says, Fish, you tell them that your neck shows experience. Well, that's all I used to tell them about my eyes. Um, you know, I could just go like this all the time. Fry, you got more chins than a chin. Hey, listen, if you're going to tell jokes uh, and be offensive, you've got to be funny. And original wouldn't hurt. You're pulling out jokes on me that were once written on a fifth grade popsicle stick. Bring a little something to the table. There is nothing wrong with my neck. <laughs> it's these are what you're what you're looking at and saying, wow, what what's Fisher? That's called muscle. Get you some. You think Richard Sherman is a better option than Anthony Brown? Richard Sherman is a is a broken person at this moment. So that's not the way uh, you're going to want to go. Yeah, Jono says, if you think your neck starts sagging when you get old, you should see how your some of your other regions. Speaking of other regions, uh, Ezekiel Elliott <coughs> tonight is going to put baby powder on his Johnsons. No, on his brass ones. Baby powder on his brass ones. Look for that if you're interested in Ezekiel Elliott's brass ones. Jamal Adams wanted to come here so bad. So. Wanted to come home. And as you know, the Cowboys played with that idea multiple times. And then Seattle blew the Jets away. Here's two first round picks. And at that time, I'm still thinking, I still would have done it. So I was arguing with G-Bag Nation because that's what they like to do with me today. And they said, well, but he's not a safety. But what are you arguing about? I'm not, I don't care if he's a safety. Yeah, but he's, a, he's an edge rusher. I know, Jeff. That's not the point. Well, but Fish, you don't understand. I do understand. I don't care what position he plays and never have. That's why I've been saying I don't want. It's the same as Kyle Pitts. Oh, you should never draft a tight end that high. He's not a tight end. Oh, you should never pay a safety. He's not a safety. He's just a player. Now, today he gets four years, 70 million, 38 million guaranteed. That makes me a little queasy. That's 17 and a half million dollars. But this league pegged Tank Lawrence more than that. They paid deep pass rushers more than that. This guy, this safety gets you nine sacks. So yeah, I would have still done Jamal Adams. And I would have, and I would have, it would have been a bank breaker. And I would have done it. And let's watch and see. Think Seattle's gonna be think Seattle's ruined? They did it. Are they ruined? They're gonna be bad for the next five years? Wanna bet? And then to Tebow. The, his, um, his faith is part of the controversy, and I think that's weird because his faith is sincere. And it should be left alone, I think. You may have a different faith and you may have a different opinion. Where he became a lightning rod for me had nothing to do with the fact that he wears his faith on his sleeve. Where he became a lightning rod for me wasn't until this year when the Jaguars brought him on to play a position that he can't play to play a sport that at this point he can't really play. Not in a way where you'd actually put him on the field and expect him to succeed. Why did Urban Meyer do this? For publicity? No, he didn't care about publicity. Did the owner approve of it for publicity? Sure. My understanding is they're still going to sell Tebow jerseys. I admire Tebow for saying, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to try it, try it, try it. I'm going to try baseball. I'm going to try football in a different position. 
I'm going to try television. You know, Hetty says I'm going to try football in a different position um, seven years ago. He might actually know how to play tight end. It's harder than just, hey, I'm I'm a person of faith and I'm a good athlete. I think I'll just try it. Uh, Zolio says the faith part of this can seem like it's part of a marketing machine from Tebow at this point. And I, I get that. Uh, uh, the, the the cynicism is part of, of of what we do. I get it. But for me, it's the same as Jalen. Jalen is sincere. He's just corny. Jason Garrett is sincere. He's just corny. I heard some people say, well, he's taking a job away from somebody else. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, just <clears throat> for a minute. He took the 90th job for the Jacksonville Jaguars, sold them a trillion jerseys, put them on the map of attention. I assume, I don't know this, Urban Meyer will surely hire him now and say, go work in quality control or or go grab a broom or something. If you want to be in football, I'll give you a job in football. That's what I would do if I was Urban Meyer. If you own that team, you don't view it like he robbed somebody of a spot. It was the 90th spot. The 90th guy on the team wasn't going to make it anyway. He did his job. He he earned the Jacksonville Jaguars, which in terms of NFL attention, finished number 32 most years. So I don't begrudge Tebow for trying. I understand what Urban Meyer was trying to do. Um, part of this is showbiz. That's the way it goes. We're going to find out how serious Tim Tebow is about football when he says, I've just accepted a job as the assistant tight ends coach. Or I'm going to ESPN. They're going to pay me a million dollars. That'll be whether or not we find out what he's really serious about. And either way, of course, is fine with me. Reggie Robinson, we covered that sack at the very top of the show. And I talked with uh, some of his people today. Obviously, we take this show, we put it on the Fish Report, you get to watch it. If you missed any part of it, there it is. It is turf toe, and I break it down in incredible detail. Um, uh, yeah, he's on IR till next year. William, are we going to get rid of Danucci? I bet you he ends up on the practice squad. You can surely cut him, and he's not going to get claimed, and then you roll him back and practice squad him. And Vocals is right about how you stash a guy, but... I saw somebody use that headline. They're stashing Reggie Robinson. Dude, you don't know you don't know anything about it. Reggie Robinson's got turf toe. He could not finish the game. It's it, he's got a legitimate injury. It just so happens that it's going to work out very well for him and for them because they don't need another young cornerback right now and he doesn't need to leave here. Michael How's your buddy McAdoo doing? Is he making a difference? I, I actually saw Ben McAdoo standing there. I'm just, I wish we didn't, if we didn't have a COVID thing, I, I'd know Ben McAdoo by now. And I'd be able to report back to you and say, you know, he got a bad rap. He's a good guy. I don't know. I don't know any of that. We're, we're going to fight through that though. Um, and maybe part of the fight will be this week at the Star. We'll be inside there, obviously. And then we will be at the game uh, covering it on 105 Through the Fan on CowboysSI.com and right here with you as well. Please subscribe to what we do. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that we have built, you have built uh, a cowboy nation here that is, what are we closing in on 33,000 people? And three months ago, we didn't, you know, I was doing things like burping on the air. I, we, oh, I just did that. Uh, I, so I, I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm here for my looks. <laughs> But also, no bullshit. Straight dope. Fish out.